My name is Lee Stimkowski, and this is a tutorial and introduction to the Unity game engine. In this tutorial, we assume you have absolutely no background, you've never used it before, and by the end, we'll have created a game called Starfish Collector. This is a simple game where the player controls a turtle who moves around the screen and whose goal is to collect all the starfish on the screen. We'll cover topics such as importing textures, creating materials, and applying them to models. We'll talk about basic physics and setting up collision meshes. And as some optional added polish at the end of the game, we'll talk about adding a user interface, just text-based. We'll create a skybox, and we'll add some audio to our game. All right, before we begin, first we need some assets to use in this game. Fortunately, the internet is great for finding what we're going to need. We won't need very many things. We'll need an image of ocean water. The easiest way to get this is to do a Google image search for a seamless texture. So go on over to images.google.com and do a search for seamless water texture, for instance. And any one of these is going to be fine. We'll also need some models for our game as well. These are three-dimensional objects which we can control and move in our game. My favorite place to go for this is a website called modelsresource.com. At this website, you can download models from various games for consoles and PC. You can't use any of these in your final projects. Think of them as using them for testing purposes only. And I'd rather not use a default system font. I'd like to use some fancy fonts. There's a great website for this as well called dafont.com. If you head on over to this website, you'll see lots of royalty-free fonts which you can use and download. So feel free to get a font as well. When you're looking for models, we'll need two models for this game. We'll need an object that will represent the player. I'm just using a turtle object and some object which is collectible. I'm using starfish, but there's nothing special about those two choices. Your player could be a mouse collecting pieces of cheese, for instance. So go ahead, download any pair of object files you want, one player and one item to collect. Once you have all of those assets ready to go, I place them on my desktop for easy access, go ahead and start up Unity. We're gonna, I'm using Unity 5.3, but you'll usually want to stay updated to the latest version. I'm also using Microsoft Visual Studio for editing code. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start up a new project. I'll call this project Starfish Collector. By default, it's set to be a 3D project, so I'll go ahead and create that. You can always toggle between 2D and 3D later on if you like. And here is the Unity window. It can be a little bit intimidating when you first use it, but I'll give you a tour of some of the main areas. Um, first, this window in the center. This is your scene. This is where you lay out the different objects in your game. It lets you design the game world. On the left is the hierarchy panel, and in this panel is a list of all the objects which are currently in your game. If you click on one, it will highlight the object in the editor. If you double click, it will center it on the screen. And that can be very useful. When an object is selected in your game, on the right hand side is the inspector panel. And this will tell you everything about the properties for the object which you've selected. For instance, the transform tells you the position or location of your object, how it's rotated along each of the coordinate axes, and how it's scaled. We'll be using this a lot. Finally, down at the bottom, is the Assets panel. This is a list of any object that you've imported into your game. It's not necessarily the list of objects currently in your scene, but anything which is available for use. Alright, let's go ahead and let's start off by importing some of our assets. So I'm going to go ahead and take this window, slide it to the side a little bit. The assets I'm going to use, let's see, I've got a water texture, that's an image, I can just click and drag this down into my Assets panel. And voila, it imports. I also want to click and drag my model of the star, the collectible object, 
and the texture which will be applied to it. The same thing for my turtle. I'm going to drag in the OBJ file, the object, and the texture which will be applied to it. And finally, I'm going to drag in my font for use later on. And there's some other objects which I'll download and import as I need them. All right. First, I want to add kind of a ground which represents the ocean floor. To do that, I'm going to right-click in the Hierarchy panel, go down to 3D Object, and create a cube. Let's see, so here's my cube. Notice that cube appears in this list. One thing we do not want is we don't want the cube attached to anything. For instance, depending on what was selected over here in the Hierarchy panel, your display might look more like this where a cube is indented underneath another object. That means it's attached, so if you see something like this, just click and drag the cube into its own position in the list. I also want to rename this. It's not just any old cube, it's going to serve as my ocean floor. So I will rename it as Ocean. Now down in the Properties panel, I've got all these different values which I can change. I'd like to center my cube at the origin, so I'm going to change the position to 0, 0, 0. And I'd like it to be a wide cube, so I'd like to stretch it out in the x and z directions. y is up, so I can leave that alone. But x and z, I want to make that nice and large, so maybe I'll make that 100 by 100 for x and z. Right now it doesn't look like much of anything, it just looks like a flat cube. So I'd like to create a material and apply that to the cube next. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click in the Assets panel. So as a side note, where you right-click, you'll get different menus. For instance, if I right-click in Hierarchy, I get one set of options. If I right-click in Assets, I get a different set. So go ahead, right-click in the Assets panel. And I'm going to create a material. I'm going to name that material mat underscore water. All right, now I'd like to use an image. I'd like this to be a texture-based material. You could set it to a solid color if you wanted by clicking on this area right here. I could set it to be some kind of a blue color. That would be cool. But what I'm really interested in is using this image. So to apply this image, I'm going to click on the texture and drag it up to this little square next to albedo. It's like a diffuse color setting. And then you'll notice it renders on this object sphere. To apply it to this cube, I now drag the material on top of the cube. That's looking pretty good. Now this particular image I selected because I can repeat the image and it lines up with itself nicely. It's called a seamless texture. To get it to repeat, Underneath the material, I'm going to take a look at the first line where it says tiling. It says tiling twice, but I'm interested in the first one. I'm going to change this to 10 by 10. Right, and then we get a very fine resolution for this object. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. And by the way, if you'd like to navigate around in your scene, you can use the different mouse buttons to move in different ways. The left mouse button selects objects. If you want to move around in your scene, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of whatever is the center focal point. I can click down the left mouse button and slide around to pan my view of the scene. If I click the right mouse button, that will go ahead and rotate around the center. In addition, there are some nice shortcuts to getting different views of a scene. For instance, if you'd like a view from the top, this little widget in the top right-hand corner of the scene area, if you click on these different cones extruding from the cube, it'll immediately switch your perspective to looking around that coordinate axis. So this is looking down from the y-axis. This is looking straight on from the z-axis, which looks kind of strange. So I'd probably want to pan up look from the X position, get different good views of your scene. All right, next I'd like to go ahead and add some other objects to my scene. I've already imported the turtle model. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this into my scene. I'd like to apply this texture to it. So once again I'm going to create a material. 
It's kind of like an intermediary between the texture and the model. Go ahead and right click in the Assets panel. I'm going to create a new material. I will call this mat underscore turtle. And just as before, I'll click and drag the texture next to where it says albedo. And then I see the texture applied to this sphere. I'll now drag this, whoop, not onto the box, but onto the turtle. All right, that looks pretty good. You might notice the turtle is a little bit shiny. You can change that by adjusting the values in the turtle material. For instance, by changing the metallic setting or changing the smoothness setting. You can get rid of that glare if you like. So feel free to experiment with the settings. All right, that turtle's looking pretty good. I'd like to do a few more things to this turtle as well. For instance, um, the turtle object, I'm going to create something called a prefab. That just enables me to duplicate the object more easily later. You might notice down here in the assets panel, the turtle model and the turtle material, they're kind of separate. If I go ahead and click on turtle model and drag it from the hierarchy panel down to the assets panel, that creates something called a prefab which is, enables me to create more instances of an object if I need it. I'm going to go ahead and rename that to turtle. And notice the image of the turtle. You can see it's got the material applied. It looks very nice. Now this turtle, I'd like it to interact in a physics-y way. I'd like it to be affected by gravity. I'd like it to collide with other objects. So what I need to do is click on turtle. I'm going to add a component. So go over to the Inspector tab for the turtle and add a physics component called Rigid Body. Right, and that's going to give it some basic physics-like behaviors. All right, so at this point we should probably save our game too. Before we do that, we also want to save the scene, which gives us the different locations of the objects that we've added. So let's go up to the File menu. I'd like to select Save Scene. Let's call this main, so it's the main scene. I'll go ahead and save the project. Pressing the play button will show me what the scene looks like. Oh, and there goes my turtle. Just flew right through the bottom there. That's because we have not yet set a collision polygon. We'll do that in just a moment. All right. So let's go ahead and click on turtle. And Turtle, you might notice there's a subheading underneath Turtle in the Hierarchy panel. That says Default. That's actually your mesh, the geometric data. In fact, if you click on it, it's hard to see, but you can see the triangular lines that make up the basic faces or polygon sides of the Turtle. So when this is selected, in the Inspector panel, you'll see things such as Mesh Renderer and the material which is being applied. I'd like to add another component. This component is also under physics. I want to add something called a mesh collider. There's lots of different ways you can say what the boundary of an object is, but mesh collider is the one we're most interested in. And I'd like to click the box next to convex. Just to simplify computation, we'll assume that the turtle is a convex shape. This speeds up rendering a lot. And once that box is checked, you'll notice there's a bunch of lines right around it. That'll be the shape of the turtle for the purposes of physics simulations. Once that's set up, if I go ahead and hit play, you'll notice your turtle actually falls on the ground. I also like to change the position of the turtle a little bit. To do this, the easiest way to get it set up is to do a top-down perspective. So back in the main scene area. I'm going to click on the Y cone so I get a top view. Then I'll double click on main camera and so I'll get a picture of the camera's point of view. Remember double clicking the hierarchy centers it on a given object. And in fact when the main camera is selected you'll see a preview of what the camera can see. I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll pan the image down. I'll click on my turtle. There's lots of different tools for moving it around. I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and by default these little arrows appear. If they aren't appearing, make sure this crosshair arrows is selected up in the top left corner. That allows you to translate your object. And in fact, oh, if you're not careful, you might go up or down. So I like to use the coordinate axes here. 
You can also spin and scale an object if you want using this set of controls. So for example I could click the rotate button. I could spin the turtle around so he's facing a different direction. I could also scale the turtle but I'm pretty happy with the default turtle size. Alright, turtle's a little bit high. That's okay, he'll fall down. Okay, next I want to add some star-like objects to this as well, the items which the turtle is going to collect in the game. All right, so in order to do that, we know what to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on the star model object and click and drag that into the scene. And you'll notice the proportions of the star are a little bit off. That's okay though, that's easy to fix. I'm going to change the position so it's centered at the origin. So the position I'll set to 0, 0, 0. The scale, I'd like this to be a whole lot smaller. So maybe I'll set this to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And that's about the right size as compared with the turtle. I probably want to rotate it too so it's kind of sitting flat on the ocean floor. So I want to rotate it around the x-axis, that's that red arrow. I want to rotate it, say, 90 degrees. So now it looks like it's lying flat. Excellent. I'd like to apply the material next. I need to create a material using this texture. So go ahead and right-click and create a new material. I'll call it Material Star. I'll apply the star texture to the box next to Albedo and then drag the material top of the star. That looks pretty good. Happy with that. Alright. A uh, few more things I want to do next. Um, one final change I need to make to the star object. And it's not obvious why we need to do this now. This will be important later when we start doing some coding. For the star model, I want to give it a tag. I want to associate kind of a textual information to the star so that I can easily identify it later in code. In order to do that, click on star model and then in the inspector panel where it says tag, it's currently untagged, go ahead and click that and you'll get a drop down menu. I'd like to add a new tag. So select that. Uh, the list of user defined tags is empty. Let's go ahead and click on that plus icon. I'm going to type as a new tag star and hit enter. I'll click on my star model again. That didn't actually add the tag, it just added the tag to the list. It didn't add the tag to the model. So click on the star model once more, where it says tag. Click in the drop-down list and now you'll see star in that list. Great, so now this particular model is tagged as a quote star. I'd like to create a prefab because I need lots of stars to collect in the Starfish Collector game. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag star model down to the assets panel. I'll rename this just regular old star. And now, this is the beauty of prefabs, I can just drag this star from the assets panel to make new stars all throughout my game. This is great so I don't have to keep reapplying the material. And so maybe I'll have a bunch of stars right there. So now I've got a few stars. Um, some other things that I should do, I should apply some physics type behaviors to the star objects as well. So I should have done this before I created the other stars, but there's an easy way to apply a change to all star objects at the same time. If I click on star down in the assets panel, I'll get the original star object, and every other star in this game is a duplicate of this prefab object. If I make any changes to the prefab object, those changes will apply to every one of these stars. So, clicking on star, first I'm going to add a component to star. Um, just as with the turtle, this is going to be a physics component, a rigid body behavior. And then the collision polygon gets added at the mesh level. So, in my star, I'm going to go to the default part of the star. And this is where you'll see the mesh renderer. This has mesh data. I'm going to add a component, a physics component, a mesh collider, and once again click on the convex box. 
and now if I click on my star you know it's working when you see kind of a green pentagon around the star shape. That's going to be the collision mesh that it uses to check for collisions. All right, we should go ahead and save once more, save the project, and then press play to test it and see how it looks. All right, you've got a turtle, you've got some starfish. Hey, it's looking pretty good. I might take a moment to adjust my camera too so I get a better view on this scene. If I go ahead and click on the main camera, and maybe I'll get a side view, I'd like to move the camera up a little bit, like so. Move the camera up, maybe move the camera back, and I'd like to tilt the camera down, so I'll click on the rotation arrows and just spin it so it's looking down a little bit. And this will give me a better perspective on the scene. Let's try hitting play again. Yep, yeah, that looks a little bit cooler. Alright, we'll go with that. Alright, so far everything's looking good. Um, there's no interactivity yet. We need to add some code to get that working. But right now, the scene is looking relatively good. Our assets menu is looking like a little bit of a mess because we have so many assets and we're just going to add more later. So now might be a good time to organize things into folders. There's one folder which is added by default. It's called the materials folder. It contains that default grayish material. I'm going to go ahead and drag my materials into this folder. And I'm going to create a few more folders as well. I'm going to right click and create a folder. This folder is going to be called textures. So I'm going to put all these different images. So the star texture, turtle texture, the water texture. I don't really need those right now. All right, and I'll make another folder for models as well. So create a folder, call this models. I'll put my star model and my turtle model in there. I'll leave my prefabs out here because these are the objects I might go ahead and clone some more later on. And I'll leave the font out here too. Later on I'll make a fonts folder, but I'll leave it here for easy access at the moment.